Abraham Maslow created his five hierarchy of needs in the mid 20th century. The basic being physiological, need for safety, need for love and sense of belonging, a need for esteem, and then finally self-actualization. This theory was embedded in the human need to have phys physiological and psychological motivation to succeed. Monument Academy opened in 2015. We intentionally enrolled children who are in or about to go into the child welfare system. We take children from shelters, cars, foster homes, or overcrowded homes, unsafe communities, and we enroll them, and we give them their physiological needs, give them clean air to breathe, free of pollutants, we give them clothing. We feed them healthy meals. We give them water. We allow them to sleep. How can you worry about what two plus two is if your belly is growling? How can you focus on the content of ELA if you're worried about who's coming into your room at night? We give them safety. We had to increase this capacity during COVID. The residential program, which these children solely relied upon, had to shut down. We chose to open back up early, October 2020, first week. We created a bubble. The NBA would have been jealous of our bubble, okay? I mean, we created a bubble and we supplied everything that those children need. They slept there, they learned that seven straight weeks they did not leave because it needed to happen. There was one child I remember, he and his mom were traveling to school on Sunday, car loaded with all of their belongings. Come in, mom, we allow her to sit in the classroom with us, with her son. And she sit there and then she would leave after she felt comfortable. And then she would come back and pick him up on Friday. Now when this child had to go home during COVID, all hell broke loose. We had to open. We had to get our children in. Need for safety, health care, employment, family stability. Safety is important. We provide that. Our communities are not safe where these children live. They're not able to get that sleep under the physiological we bring them to a safe place. But it's not just that. Safety is embedded in the healthcare. We make sure that they get their immunizations. We make sure they get to the dentist, the optometrist. We bring the National Children's Hospital to us. We put the van in the parking lot, everybody gets their shots so that they're not excluded. Because DC will exclude you if you don't have your shots. We bring the van to the school. We take care of that. We also give them their therapeutic support through our big partnerships with the community-based organizations. We make sure that they complete their forms and if the parents are unable to do it, we put them in a place where they can understand what's needed for them to be great adults. Unfortunately, too many of, my fa of our families don't have high employment rates. Unemployed, underemployed, uneducated, undereducated where well, we build that in. But we also build it into the children. We empower them early to understand. We partner with an organization, Junior Achievement in the National Capital Area. They have a one, two wonderful programs which we participate, Finance, Park, and Biz Town. Now, we know that all conversations differ from household to household, that the breakfast table, dinner table. Well, guess what? We introduce our scholars early what it's like to be a CEO, CFO, COO at fifth and sixth grade. They have to go to a town, indoor town, and run their businesses. We're empowering them. They learn in seventh and eighth grade what it means to be an adult and pay bills. This past month, they visited Finance Park, and they had scenarios. But every scenario was different. Your scenario, you're single, you're making $200,000, no kids, or you're having a good time in life. But guess what? Your best friend next to you, 
You're a single dad. You have four kids. You make 42000 And guess what? You have to live for like an adult for a day next to each other. I saw kids crying on a scenario. I don't want them to cry as adults like we do when it's time to pay bills. So we empowered them early. Say so they understand and they understand how important education is to them and what it's like to go and be gainfully employed and get health care, get their bills and get family stability. That's extremely important. Love and a sense of belonging, tier three. Family, connections. We build that in our family style living. We hold them, we embrace them. We show them what it means to be loved and protected. Five years ago, when I took over to see the CEO, we did a survey. And we found that 55 of our 101 enrolled students at that time had been to three or more schools since first grade. And we started grade five. 15 of these middle schoolers had attended six or more schools. There were no relationships built in academia. There were no connections. We built that in and we decided we're going to give them the gift of time. We're going to love you up. And we're not going to promote you because how did you get in the fifth grade and you read on the third, or excuse me, a first grade level? Eighth grade on the third grade level. I am going to love you and keep you here for me until you're ready. I empower them. I build hope. So we keep them with us. We had an eighth grader this past year. Staff returned to school August 2nd. On that day, he called us. We thought that he was just going to uh, check in because the week before his uncle had been gunned down, a couple of doors down from where he lives. He called us to tell us the night before his mother was gunned down a few feet from where his uncle was. And could he come to school? We're like, well, we haven't opened the apartments yet, but we'll figure something out. Well, we bonded with the grandmother's older brother to get him in, to get him settled. He came in, we supported this young fella. I'll call him Kevin. We bonded with the older brother and the grandmother. And then December came. The older brother was killed in a hit and run. He leaned on us, he leaned into us. We're loving him, we're connecting with him. We're giving him that social emotional support. We have him connected with community-based organizations to give him that lifting up, that love he needs, that wraparound services. And he lives in Monument. Esteem. COVID hit. Every day hit. Things hit even before COVID hit. We were in a societal pandemic in many communities around our nation, around our world. Pandemic just didn't hit with COVID for many communities. These children were already suffering, the families were suffering. But COVID hit, and I had one young lady who's now in seventh grade who had not been in school since March 2020, did not go out of her house. We had to build that confidence in her so that she could now participate in school. And we did it gradually. We brought her in. We loved on her. She stayed at home. First, she was online. We made sure that she could join all classes online to get acclimated. Because her mother enrolled her in a residential school. She was really going from zero to 10. She wasn't even going to a traditional, well, I'm going to roll you in a residential. We're like, okay, well, we can figure this out. I'll call her Angelica. Angelica first started online. Then Angelica came in for a couple of days. Then she visited the residential homes, and mom would sit with her. And then mom one day told us, okay, I'm going to drop off her suitcase. You all break the news to her. We're like, okay. But we did. And now this young lady is living and loving school, participating in programs, going on field trips. Mind you, she had not been out of the house since 2020. And she's not only surviving, she's thriving. And then we get to self-actualization. Morality, acceptance, creativity. We created a calendar that and supports our children. They can afford these camps in the summertime. We create camps in between trimesters. We pay for the camps. Band camp, coding camp, 
basketball camp, soccer camp. And it's not just our school. We go to the best venue in the DMV area, the St. James. And we go out there and we pay for it. And we love them up so then they can identify where they can be, where they can grow. Because as I like to say, we empower our babies and we build hope within them. We celebrate them. We support them. We love them. And I thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to share about the work that we're doing at Monument Academy. Thank you.